Well, congratulations. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good. How are you guys doing? They're pretty good. We saw your fight. It was pretty good. Yeah. You know, I've uh, had cleaner performances, but well, what fun is it if you don't get punched in the face a few times, right? So how did you anticipate this fight going based off how, you know, how different was it than how it went in there? Were you uh, anticipating it being as difficult as it was? You mean getting punched in the face and head a bunch of times? Yeah, I was trying not to do that, but you know, you get into a fist fight, that's kind of what happens. Uh, Edmund did a great job on the feet. He had very good uh, distance management. He had some good, clean power shots down the middle. He caught me with a really good body shot, that just the way it landed, uh, the action on it at the end, it kind of landed in a weird spot, and it just, you know, I, I got a pretty tough stomach. Like, usually body shots don't do anything, but just the way and the time he caught me, that really sucked, and that kind of started the... Uh, the little sequence of him just like beating me about the head and shoulders but as long as I'm awake I got a chance to win and I pretty much blocked everything and uh you know just had to weather the storm a little bit and found my way out how how do you weather that storm because I know none of us know what that feels like <laughs> thank god um but <laughs> you can find out really easily if any of you are interested That's, <laughs> I don't recommend it but no, yeah thank you um just like is it do you have to put yourself in a different place or do you, what do you do to kind of stay motivated? Oh, no. And yeah, no, I just, I, I know if I'm still awake, there's a way for me to win. You know what I mean? You got to put me six feet under before I'm going to stop fighting. Um, you know, whether it's on the feet, swinging back, if I got a chance on the ground, you know, I, my chances are as good as anybody's on the mat. And uh, I know what it looked like because obviously it was happening to me. But all I was thinking after that body shot and when he was trying to, you know, get me out of there, I was like, oh, this is great. He's going to tire himself out. <laughs> and, uh, should make wrestling him a whole lot easier. And uh, fortunately for me, it didn't get stopped, and it did, because, you know, I blocked most of the shots. There was a couple of times I rolled uh, backwards because I figured he was going to let me up, which probably would have been the smart move, but he just kept going to town and thought he could get a quick finish and get out of there. But, you know, I was rolling with everything. Every time Mark Smith said to move, I moved, and, uh, you know, I took most of the shots on the arms except for this nice little dot on my forehead I got, and you know, eventually he gassed out and I got a hold of his neck. How awkward is it when you get back on the airplane and your face is all messed up and you see these other passengers, they freak out? I mean, I'm not a model to begin with, so I'm not sure what anyone's expecting. I usually, this, is, this isn't too bad. I mean, I've had much, much worse, so we'll see how it looks tomorrow. And I know this is a silly question because we know you, nobody wants to go in there and get beat up, like you said, but is there any part of you that's like, hey, I was able to withstand this. I'm proud of myself. Look what I could do. Look what I could overcome. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, a clean victory, like my last fight would be a much better example than of that. But like I fought a really tough guy and he's been ranked before and he's got some really good wins. And, uh, you know, I think if you're going to go fight somebody like, yeah, it's scary to fight a guy who's a knockout artist or a guy that's like super strong or has endless cardio and all this stuff. But uh, I think you should be really scared of a guy that's not going to quit and that's not going to go away just because you land a couple shots. And why Paul Craig? Uh, you know, I've had teammates suggest it. I've seen that thrown around uh, online a bunch of times, and stylistically it seems like a fun matchup. And uh, I don't think he's got anything on the books right now. And, you know, he's another guy that's been ranked before, and I think it'd be uh, another great way to test myself and two really good submission artists going at it. And, you know, win-win situation. When would you like to have that fight? It was ideal turnaround time for you. Uh, if I could get on that December 14th card in Tampa, that'd be amazing. Thank you. Gerald, uh, so I think anyone that's been a fan of the sport for a while knows a lot of the things that you've done in the octagon, but <laughs> what, what does it mean to actually have the, you know, the most finishes in middleweight and kind of have a statistic that really represents what you've done in your career? Uh, I, it's cool to say, you know what I mean? I don't think about it too much right now. It's just kind of one fight at a time and... Uh, I wish I could give you more than that because, you know, it, it is a cool thing. Like, truth be, if I sit here and, like, stop and give myself a little pat on the back, like, that's awesome just to have my name in the same conversation or sentence as, you know, somebody like Anderson Silva or Damian Maya and guys like that. That's great. But uh, I got a lot of fight left in me. I got a lot more fights to go. And when I hang them up, that'll be a cool thing, you know, throw around and be like, ah, oh, I was cool back in the day, you know. I got a teacher, T-Top Firebird. I used to be the all-star. No, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, it's, it's a cool thing to say for now, and then when I'm retired, it'll be fun to tell my kids and watch them not care. And being a veteran of the game, uh, what, what would you say to someone like Edmund Shabazzian, who's still only, you know, 25, 26, but 
is going to probably continue to go through some of these mental, you know, lapses of these setbacks? Yeah, I mean, just keep at it. He's a really tough, talented kid. Uh, you know, that it was a winnable fight for both of us. You know what I mean? Like that was some really good matchmaking. Obviously, there's pretty clear path to victory for both of us. But uh, my advice to him or to anybody who's coming up and like, look, if you look at my record, obviously I've got a few losses. You know what I'm saying? But as long as you're improving every time and your skills are getting better, no matter if you win or lose, you have a chance to become a better fighter and a better person. Uh, and until your body can't take it or if you don't want to do it mentally, as long as you're improving, I say keep at it. And was this something that you learned from experience? Like, was there ever a point early in your career where you had a bad loss and you're like, you know what, I'm done with this? Man, I tell you, not even bad losses, but like, you know, people know I had a lot of fights coming in, but there was a, like a period of time in my life before I got in the UFC, like I was really considering whether or not I could keep doing this. You know what I mean? I had, I think, just about 30 fights or over 30 fights. I was about to turn 30. You know what I mean? You got 20 plus fights and you're not getting the call. No local guys want to fight you. You know, I was like barely getting by being like a warehouse manager. So I was, you know, working split shifts training full-time, doing strength conditioning, like, uh, I was probably having, like, 50, 60-hour work weeks if you put everything together and, you know, barely scraping by. And it was one of those things where, like, I know I could hang out, train with guys that were UFC champions or world champions in other organizations, guys that were, you know, incredible wrestling and jiu-jitsu pedigrees and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I just told myself, if I'm still improving and I can hang with these guys, I got to keep going. And, you know, I even... It's probably not the best idea mentally, but I even went so far as like I bought some books on trade and like was looking into taking classes because I was like, I don't know how much longer I can do this before, you know, life passes me by. But luckily I held on and now I'm here. Thank you for your time. Yes. Congrats on the win. Another fantastic come from behind victory. That's just your brand. Like, it's still shocking to see, but it's fun to watch. <laughs> <Thanks>. on <laughs> yeah, head. yeah. Uh, this had a little bit of a, uh, like, made me think of uh, Shane Carwin, Brock Lesnar. Brock takes a beating, but when he goes for the submission, he went exactly the same route. Why, why did you go that It's all very flattering, the way you're framing this. <laughs> I just can't. Yeah. Uh, I would have liked the clean takedown and getting him out of there, but again, you know, he was doing really good on the feet. He was keeping distance, which made the shots a little bit harder. There's... Uh, some adjustments I could have made on the finish that probably would have made my life a little bit easier, but, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. And then uh, the second round, I started shooting a lot more. Uh, he obviously tagged me with that good shot, but that was going to be the recipe, right? Just wear on him. You know, I know he usually wins the first round. Just get through that first round if you can't get a hold of him and then start wearing on him, and then we'll go from there. And I could see him starting to get tired even before the body shot. And then after that, I knew I was like, all I got to do is survive this. And I know there's a way I can get on top and win. And, uh, you know, if you're not going to be exciting beating the guy up the entire time, then you got to be exciting getting beat up and getting it back. So here we are. And, you know, some guys might have defended a, a rear naked choke better or like an arm bar or such. But why that? Did you go for that? Like the you saw that opening, like arm triangle, like, OK, ah, this is it. Like, I know he's not going to expect this. Really going to catch him slipping and, and, and put him away. Or it was like a in the moment adjustment. No, it was a reaction thing, yeah. So I hit, that, uh, I hit that high crotch and I finished off. Once I pinned him down, I was like higher up, like a half guard cross body-ish type position. Um, but I was driving my head up, the idea being that my hips would carry up higher and that I could pass and either take mount or he would try to roll and get to his base and that would give me his back. Um, but it was just really easy for me to pin his shoulder to the mat. And I know if I can get my head to the floor and underneath your arm, as long as you, he had two choices. He either keeps his arm there and rolls away from me, right, and then I'm probably going to get three-quarter mounters back, or he keeps his arm on the ground, which he elected, or kind of elected to do, and then I would take him out. And he, like, stopped halfway, and I just, we were so slippery, too, I just kept sliding up, and I know once I get my arms locked around someone's neck like that, it's a wrap. Man, that was amazing to watch, and just um, for sure another highlight reel. A lot of the times uh, the fighters, you know, go in on the revs, the, the social media, blah, blah, blah. But can we give a shout out to someone who for sure gave you that opportunity, that fighting chance, and then call it sooner? Because we obviously saw how it would have been almost unjust for you to get that loss and not really be hurt if you're rolling with these shots. 
and obviously he let you fight. Mark gave you that opportunity to be like, okay, you're alert. Yes. I see that. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, Mark's a great referee. I've had him for a few fights now. Uh, and he's not lying. All the fights, he always says, all my fights are fight of the night. And every time I have it, it's if I have him or Herb Dean, then, like, I, either I got to kill someone or I'm almost going to die. This is, like, the only two options with those guys. Uh, but, you know, he said, hey, if I say move, you move. I did a good job moving. He let me work. Um, you know, as I said, we've worked together before. He's familiar with uh, my unorthodox way of gassing my opponents out. So I yeah, get the benefit on the doubt on that one. And, uh, yeah, luckily he gave me a fighting chance. And, like I said, most of those shots I blocked. Um, so everything was all good and, you know, got the right decision. That's awesome, man. And last for me, fans are going to tune in. You know, they know you're going to bring in. You mentioned Maya and Silva before, guys who have fought for the belt. One of them, of course, one of the greatest of all time. What does that mean still to you, fighting for gold? Is that still on the, on the to-do list? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's always the end goal. And, you know, anybody can say what they want about how far-fetched that is. But, you know, there's plenty of guys that are getting ranked at 38, 39, 40 years old. And I still got plenty of tread on the tires, even <laughs> with all my fights and, you know, everything I've put myself through. Like I have said earlier this week, I'm just built tough. So, you know, if I'm going to outla outlast these guys and it just takes me a little bit longer, so be it. Awesome, man. Congrats on the win. Thank you. Well done, sir. Appreciate you guys.